Greetings, it's Vagram. Welcome to a Monday episode, technically a redo episode, of Vagram's Chance. Okay, something went completely haywire with my recording software, and the, um, I think what I capture with, uh, I don't know if it, it didn't crash, but I think it bugged and it got stuck on a lower quality, a lower bit rate than it was supposed to. So it was recording at very low pixelated quality. Um, I forgot to do a test record beforehand, and it bit me in the butt. That is a lesson to all of you other YouTubers out there, or people aspiring to become a YouTuber. I almost always do a test recording beforehand to make sure some setting hasn't gone haywire. This morning, I got into a hurry. I didn't do that, and it bit me. So this is the change. This is what the, the, the side of the room behind me looked like. It was jars stacked like this. This is what it looks like now because of this guy. Basically, he can use these as stairs to climb, and he can still reach. He basically can reach too high on these jars. So if he gets up here, he can reach this one and this one. Right here, he can reach this one and this one. Um, over here, etc., etc. So basically, it is jars and stairs. I'm going to redo this side of the room. Um, actually, you know what? Let's... Just go get some great wood right now. Now, there's something I need to redo first. Whoa. I need to get out my little Gollomancer bell. Yeah, this is a total freaking mistake. Because, well, I don't know if it's a mistake or not. This is the only way I can have him... This is the only way I for sure know that he sees all the jars, is I basically have to mark them all. The only downside to that is that... It means he, how did I do that? I did it like this, like this. Something, something, something. Like that. I, yeah, no, I think. So basically, this is the only way I could actually assure that he sees every single jar. Now, another change that I've been doing, I have slowly been upgrading all of my jars to void jars, specifically because it means that it's basically like having a, a barrel a Java barrel that's void upgraded. Uh, you don't have to worry about. Whoops. Uh, you basically don't have to worry about um, something overflowing, having multiple jars of the same thing. You know, leave that there. Etc. The way that that works is basically if he sees this void jar and it's labeled for the right thing, he will try to put it in here first instead of going to another jar. A labeled void jar always wins, basically. So now, if I have something that's that gives me, let's say, uh, 60 vitreous, but it gives me 30 of something else I really need, this will just keep, he'll keep pouring into this and it'll just keep disappearing, basically. The excess just gets lost. And that is, I think, the best way do it. Now this is where the frame rate drops happen. Nope. This is the only way I have found to make sure that he knows where every single jar is. It destroys my frame rate, but it guarantees success on pathfinding. So there is that. Um, so this whole system is because of this. Basically, I had that um, wisp farm turned on, and this chest was full, literally. All different kinds of things. I had different stacks of uh, different aspects, and it is fabulous. It's a great, and it's a very easy way. I'm just going to throw some iter in there. I think you'll see that somewhere I have... 
Where'd the Aitor go? Aha, there it is. Yeah, Aitor 50. Now there's something I know I'm out of, which is Perditio. Chaos. So I did all of this. I started overhauling this specifically because I got him. I set him up initially, and I tied him to... I right-clicked on the alchemical furnace when I set him down. I gave him his... Uh, oh, gosh. Sorry, I get it your way, dude. Step over here in the corner. Way over here. Yeah, his alchemy core. I gave him an alchemy core, which is an upgraded decanting core. And he went to work. And uh, he works fabulously. So, now all I have to do is throw some things in the alchemical furnace and he does the rest of the work. But all of these were normal jars. I've slowly upgraded them one by one. Basically what I tried to do was get them to a, div a number that was dividable by eight. And then I used glass files. Eight glass files will empty a 64-fold jar. So I would empty the jars, pull the label off, put a voided jar down, Put the files back in there, because they recycle. You get them back. Empty the files into there again and put the label back on. And I did that one by one. And uh, it probably wasn't the most exciting episode, but it was definitely interesting. Now, I did all of this to try and improve my kind of system on things, because I wanted to make uh, one of these. These storage necklaces. 250 capacity. Well, guess what else we did last if, uh, that got lost? <laughs> so, um, this is now my back battery storage for my wands. It will slowly recharge my wands after they've expended some energy, which is great. So, basically, I now have 350 Vs storage capable on this wand, but I still want to make more. How much of that's left? Ooh, there's still a lot left, okay. I have discovered that he can reach all the way up here to something that are aspects that are in this. I think he's interfacing through that bottom and pulling it out that way. But basically, he will use all four of these and seems to work okay. Um, we are... Orum. Everything has Orum, so I've wasted so much Orum, it's not even funny. But I'm filling this jar up with Perdicio. I think I need some... Nope, there it is. Potentia. There was something else I need. Tenebrae I'm all off of, out of. But this was double full. You have to understand the top five rows were just base aspects. Not five, maybe four. And then a whole bunch of extraneous individual ones. Uh, so that's where I got basically all of my Humanus. Most of my Examinus. Uh, Famus. Cognitio. Meto. All of these things. Weird stuff like Vitium. That's where I got most of that, was from these aspects. Uh, where's that weird one? Limus. It looks like an amoeba. Uh, Victus. Iter. All of this stuff I was actually topping off from these. And it was working fabulously. So I'm trying to see if there's anything that I have. Ordo is full. Terra is not full, but let's see, 58, 60, 62, 64. Doesn't take much. Let's toss that in there. So, um, basically, now I have this entire room automated. Now, there's another discovery I made. If I had this mirror in the middle of the floor, it can't reach that top row of jars. So what I've had to do is move the mirror over, and then I made a so it's direct, directly above that half of the room. Then I made a second one for the other side of the altar that's above this half of the room. Now everything reaches, everything works, easy peasy, it's really nice. And this is definitely a great system. Now what I've started doing again is moving aura nodes. I have this one right here. And it's not amazing, but it definitely works. It's got uh, what looks like 22 fire, 20 air, 17 terra, earth. So um, what I'm going to start doing slowly but surely is start merging aura nodes again. Because I can put my necklace 
this thing right here into that to charge. And that'll be cool. Compound means this compound uh, recharge focus means it'll take compound aspects and break them down. So I'm going to start using... Nope. That doesn't work. Sometimes you can just right-click on bobble stuff. It goes into the slots. Um, I'm going to be doing that slowly but surely, re-merging more nodes. I've got these set to power this. If I stand next to this, you'll see it does charge this thing. That's his, This is how I've been charging it. I went AFK for 30 minutes. And it does work. I can stand next to this one also, and it does the same thing. But uh recharges next to this one a little bit faster because this one's got better numbers. But it's still eh, not exactly optimal. So I, I'm going to try and start making a new mega node, and we're going to see how that can go. Um, I think I want to get an advanced node stabilizer and put it under there because that basically means that it's a one-way transition, and I think it improves the numbers, but I can't remember 100% for sure. So that is the progress we have been making in Thongcraft so far. The Golem... The Thaumcraft Alchemy Golem has been making things a lot easier. And I'm very, very happy about that. Now, another thing that I actually wanted to share with you guys, that um, Wisp Farm has been working so well that I think what I want to actually do is try and see if I can... Let's see... Um, If I do barrel, avoid upgrade, slots used. Upgrade. Um, this has upgrade slots zero. I have 56 barrels because if I my math is correct, um, there are 56 aspects in my mod pack. Gonna make a whole bunch of. Oh yeah, the system is busy handling this. I forgot. Um. So what I want to actually do is try and see if I can make an auto sorting system. I've done a little bit of math, and basically, if I make a stack of barrels, four barrels tall, then I, I have to have, fourteen of those to cover, fifty-six different aspects. If I put void upgrades on the barrels, that means that I will always have a max barrel of any aspect, and I can just leave the whole system running. Which will be cool, because that means that at any given time, I go out there for whatever aspect I need, even the rare ones, and it'll be there. Uh, these, oh great, these only stack to 64. Yay. I mean, uh, 16. Let's do... Why uh, to craft? Okay, why? Oh, no crafting CPUs are available. What? Let's, whoopsie. Put that back there. Let's double check this again. Structural. Okay. Something very strange is going on here. Why does that lever say error? This is interesting. Um, I did step out of the dimension think technically means that most of this has stopped working. Uh, nope. 
Okay. Bits of the AE system just kind of stop talking to each other at different points. And now, see, for some reason, I'm not seeing any. That's not getting power. I wonder why. Oh, I think I know why. I moved my lever, and it's an inverted bus. It's not a bus bus. There we go. So now... No crafting CPUs are available. I'm a little lost. What's going on here, guys? Structural... Four hundred and ten bytes used. Maybe I don't have enough. Well, I have two one K cells. Um crafting Nope, that'd be too easy, wouldn't it? One K crafting storage. Do one K. Two of those to start. I cannot do any any actual. Hmm. First thing I'm going to do is that. So that's getting power. This is very weird. I don't know why this isn't working. Okay, bugged. Apparently. Can I do that? Yay! Okay, it's working. Don't know why. I still actually have to make a whole bunch of other upgrades, too. Um, yeah, every once in a while, either part of the AE system will stop talking to the Ender IO AE cables, or the AE system will stop talking to another part of the AE system. So it's a little buggy. This version is, at least. Good enough. I think, um, yeah, I think that's right. Now, I also need void upgrades. Let's just do 56. This is going to have a whole bunch of crafting in its future also. Stacks of 16. Why mod authors insist to only stack things up to 16 is beyond me. I don't, I don't really get that. It seems like it's more of a hassle than anything. So this is what I wanted to do, right? Let's go over to the mob farm. I'm actually going to... Basically, I'm going to renovate the hillside. Let's just mow through this. This atomic disassembler cuts through material quite quickly. Let's just mow through this. And 
Now basically, from what I know, I want to have one, two, three, four, five. That's six. And then seven. We're just going to have to remodel this a little bit, but um, I can redecorate it at least. <laughs> Dent into the hillside here. I'm actually going to make a nice little alcove here. And let's get some of this, some of this. I'll put you right here, and I'll put you right there. And actually, no, I want those there. So, item conduits, we want to get no, thank you, shift. Full stacks of those. I kill those. And now the fun begins. Let me think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But no, I still need to do. Nope. You see how big this is going to be? So if we did 5, at 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, okay, we did 6, yeah, but then six, it's going to be so high. Hmm. 12, 18, 24, 32, 38. Whew. Okay. I think, unfortunately, I'm just going to have to... Indent And then what we need to do is go down here. There is a method to my madness, ladies and gentlemen. I Yeah, I would like to actually thank you. Insert, I tell you what's going to be a heck of a lot easier. What? There we go. Okay, maybe that won't be easier. Never mind. Insert. Insert, and I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to get this set up somehow, and I will see you guys in just a moment. Okay. Is it crazy? 
Probably. Is it inefficient? Most likely. But this is what I actually am going to go with. It is a kind of a strange ascending wall of barrels. It's eight tall over here, four tall over here, and it kind of goes up. There is an array. Uh, let me just... Pipes all the way back here. All of them, I hope, have been set to insert. Which means if I turn this on... Oh, this is set to extract... Active without a signal. I'm actually going to turn it to always on. And it's set for Thomcraft only. It's only going to extract Thomcraft. Maximum upgrade on speed. Which means very quickly, as soon as the actual wisps start dying, we will get Ethereal Essence. Now the only thing that I've noticed... I probably need to upgrade the spawner. Hmm. I hadn't thought about that. Oh, no, I need that one. Let's just get one of those and put it there for the time being. I'm going to redo all of this to match this flooring over here. I'm also going to redo this wall to match this stuff. It's just going to take a little bit. So this is the only downside that I actually foresee on this entire equation. I can't tell what ethereal essence this is. It's color-coded. But... I do still stand by the actual premise of concept. This means that basically, whenever I want to, I can come over here, get a full stack, or several stacks, out of each kind, and just go melt it down. Eventually, I'll have 56 individual void jars, and I can come over here whenever I want to, grab one stack from everything, funnel it into the actual alchemical furnace, and it's going to be fine. So technically, I don't need to actually know. Now, another thing that I did over the weekend, because I actually let this run long enough that it killed the Ender Sword in here, um, I actually have an item conduit that is set to... This is in-out. The extract is set to chargeable item filter. This is a great new addition to Ender IO. Recently new. Not, not recently new, but newish. Less than 25%, so this is always active. If this sword gets less than 25% charge level, it'll get pulled out into this single block capacitor bank right here. It'll get recharged, and then as soon as it equals 100% charged, it goes back in, into uh, Killer Joe. Now, I have my pack set to where 100% of the damage absorbed goes into the battery if you get your weapons and tools up to N powered 4. I have set my Ender IO that way for my pack. That means that this will never take damage because this will keep recharging it. We don't have to worry about it anymore. So that is going to be a great thing. I don't need those. You can see, by the way, they all have two upgrades on them, two structural upgrades. I have to have at least two slots to use a void upgrade, and the first one only gives one. So you have to go to the second one, which means you have an extra slot available. Not much you can do about that. I could put space on all of them. Might do that. But as it stands right now, I can now officially leave this running. The only thing I want to do is get a facade real quick. Do I have uh, any facades? Falafels, as my friend Bevo says. Want to get a falafel. And we're going to go back down there. And Pipple. It looks relatively new again. Now, uh, what I want to do, actually, let's pull this out. This is cobblestone with dark panel. Watch me find something revolutionarily interesting under this. I'm just sitting here this whole time. Probably not, but... Let's 
get a full stack of this cobblestone dark panel. Oh, there we go. It all matches up now. Yeah. Whoopsie. One floor to rule them all. Kinda. And then what I want to do with these... Detailed cobblestone bricks. Oh, there's a cave back here. And there's a torch in it, which means I've actually been in there, so... Yeah. Just gonna cap this off, make it look nice. Let's go in ascending up to right about here. Ooh, copper. And we need to make more of that. Mm, where was it? That's a good start. I'll bring that up one more level, take it all the way across, but I'm going to worry about that later as it stands right now. I think this definitely looks a lot more polished. I could put something over here if I wanted to, but basically, I'm just going to let this run. So, I mean, that is Terra. I could put signs on every one of these. And that might be something worth doing. Uh, it's too bad it won't show the metadata on the item. But that's okay. That's unavoidable. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to let this run. Maybe if I leave everything in the same barrels. Then I can just put signs on the barrels. Because I can still pull out past the signs. Maybe it'll work. It'll be a unique situation. I know normally you color vision seeing people can actually do this a lot more easily. Ordo. What's this? Tempestus. Okay, that's already interesting. And, oh, I put a whole block there. Color me confused. Let's get our saw. Grab that. That looks... Better-ish. There we go. I'm actually going to put this stuff in there for right now. It is a little bit of a catch-all chest, but hey, that's fine. Um, da, 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 da. There we go. So this is my new essence array, my ethereal essence array. This is going to have one of everything, at least... The longer I let it go, the more it's going to fill up. And I don't have to worry about these whole system backing up because I have void upgrades on the barrels. Like I said, yeah, I, I do think this is overkill, but this basically ensures that I don't have to worry about either infusion or uh, crucible work and having the right elements ever again. So I'm happy about this. I'll see you guys in the next episode of Agrim's Chance. Have a great day. Bye-bye.